Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Taurus. If Taurus is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. A little messy on the execution there. Okay. Knock, knock, knock. And let's see what do these tea leaves have to say. All right. And so our card for tonight is the Two of Discs. Okay, and this card has everything to do with change. So... There's some kind of change coming. <laughs> Something is happening. Um, and, uh, you know, this because there are the two discs and it is kind of surrounded in this figure eight shape uh, with the Ouroboros or the snake eating its own tail. In this depiction, the snake is wearing the crown. Um, this is all about that kind of balance between the higher and the lower parts of self, of um, the experience of realities, um, higher consciousness, and our mundane life. Kind of that whole as above, so below, and the eternal process of things flowing down and up and down and up and, you know, the endless feeding cycle. <laughs> So, let's start here. We have some really beautiful formations tonight for you, Taurus. And we'll look at this one first. This one looks like a deer to me. And you can see the antlers up here. Okay. And we have uh, two other smaller animals right below. Okay. So, in my estimation, this is kind of, you know, a sense of, well, family, okay? But these are not the same kinds of animal. These are not, this one looks like a deer. This one looks more like a goat and maybe a little goat here. So, right off the bat, it makes me think the closeness is in relation, right? In the greater sense, these are animals. Um, <laughs> these are mammals. Uh, and possibly a family, okay? But they couldn't be more different, really, okay? Um, I think that during this time, this very spiritual place, and we know the deer is that most sacred deer, right? Um, kind of a uh, power animal totem. It doesn't have to just be a totem, but a symbol of that kind of um, ethereal, um, ethereal, excuse me, uh, <laughs> um, ethereal kind of uh, energetic, elusive, um, just kind of there and then it's not, you kind, I kind of think of, right, a deer in the clearing with the sun coming down through the trees and it's almost kind of a, a misty, sparkly kind of scene and you see that deer just for a second, it stops and it turns and it looks at you and just so briefly there is that connection and then as soon as you, or as, you know, as fast as you've seen it, it's gone, right? Took off right into the tree line. So I feel that you are really, uh, you're really in a very highly um, activated state, very aware, um, very much attached to spirit, 
um, probably very magical things happening, uh, synchronicities, patterns, uh, messaging from the other side, all this kind of stuff. You're feeling very, um, very much like things are happening for a reason. Okay. And then we have family. Probably not chosen family, but family of origin. And I feel that there's often been the struggle of balancing um, a sense of love and duty and devotion and, um, well, that place that you come from uh, with the other side of it, which is kind of almost a pain, a resentment, um, carrying the old hurts, okay? Um, trying to kind of find a way to let go of these feelings from this life that has passed. Uh, I imagine you have gone out into the world. You maybe have had your own family. Maybe your own children are having their own children, right? Um, but I feel like some things, you know, they just stick with us. And I have this distinct feeling that it was almost kind of like you felt like you were never really chosen by your family. You know, maybe you had siblings, uh, cousins that were within your peer group, your, your age group. Um, and I think that maybe everybody kind of really connected easily. Um, there were, you know, if, especially if you're in a larger family, um, there are kind of little cliques that rise, arise in the family and right, it kind of rise up and, um, can become kind of distinct, but I feel like you never felt like you were really chosen by anybody. Um, you were kind of an outsider. And I don't, you know, as a young child, I don't think this felt good. I think as you got older, you just kind of did your own thing. Um, maybe it was the thing that saved you from staying uh, kind of stuck in the same cycles that your family has been in. Um, you know, I think oftentimes when you're an outsider within the family, um, it's kind of like... It's hard, you know, it can be lonely. It can really give you um, comp uh, like a complex about, you know, not feeling worthy. But at the same time, it's kind of like a gift. It's like a, uh, you can get, you can get your, your stuff together and move away. <laughs> you know, you can go have your own life. Um, you may love these people. You may stay in contact with them. I mean, you may even live just a few blocks away. But uh, you don't have to kind of be shackled to the things that go on. To um, the conditionings. To the, the, you know, strange ideas about the world that our families so often have. Right? Um, so, I think that there is a sense of... Um, going back and forth, vacillating between, feeling very hurt. Like, why, why, why didn't they, you know, love me as much as my brother or my sister or my cousin or my aunt, my uncle, whatever. Why, um, why did nobody go out of their way to, to, you know, commune with me, to know me, whatever. And then at the same time, it's almost kind of like, I don't think, if I was not related to these people, I probably would not even speak to them. You know, not that, 
Not that you're like, you know, so rude in that way. But, I mean, let's be real. Sometimes we just don't really connect with our people. And if we were to choose, you know, if they were just any old person on the street, we maybe wouldn't ever have any reason to get to know them. And so, all of these years later, there's still this feeling of like kind of just, you know, oranges and apples, right? Or maybe it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of two very different things. Like uh, a sweet potato and a grape, right? Just very different, very different. And um, I think that sometimes this comes up. It does. There's still love. I can see that. There's still these little loves here. But I think this is something you've really had to work through. And I feel that Spirit has put this into your life in this way because this is something that... Um, and this maybe is kind of a little bit of a hot take, but... Um, when we have trouble attaching or having, you know, um, deep attachments to the people who raise us or who we are raised up around, um, it can either, I mean, it can go either way where you kind of just seek out any old kind of, um, acceptance or you have the ability to um, be more discerning about who and what you attach yourself to because you've been able to be a little bit askew a little bit step stepped back and watching how things kind of play out with other people there's something about being very tight with people from a really young age um, and then kind of never growing out of that, like getting space from one another that, um, it's almost kind of like hive mind, right? It doesn't always kind of make sense. Even when people are not nice to each other, um, even when, you know, things go on and you're like, wow, I would never want somebody to treat me that way or talk to me that way, or I would never do something for somebody that you know, could put me in harm's way or whatever. But sometimes when you just know, you don't have any sense of um, individuality from a young, young age, right? Go on up. You know, I'm sure I don't really know because, I mean, I myself, I don't, I, although I have friends from my youth, I'm not, I've never been super close to anybody um, I, from my family or, you know, through the years, I've always chosen my people. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of understand, um, and I feel like this is kind of that, that same kind of vibe. I feel though, like I've met so many Tauruses that are kind of like this too, you know, um, kind of the, kind of a little bit of, the black sheep of the family, sometimes the pariah of the family or, you know, forced into that configuration because their family is just, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, there, there are benefits, even if it has been very painful. Also, I think let me, and I, this, I'm going to move on to the next thing here in a second. But also I think that when you are a person who has not been chosen, who has kind of been othered, um, if you grow into being a person that, uh, goes out of their way to be inclusive, to mind people's feelings, to be caring, um, you know, to be tender and gentle with others, uh, you know, it, it kind of almost makes it worth it because you're, it's like you're an angel to, to people who, um, you know, might not have the strength that you do, who might not know how to navigate 
the cards they've been dealt, you know, or, um, you know, just have such a trouble, um, kind of finding, um, you know, their place anywhere. So, you know, when we come in contact with somebody who is loving, inclusive, creates places that are safe and, um, open and vulnerable and, you know, um, that can be life changing. Okay. And usually that can, I mean, it really has to be done, um, almost always by somebody who has felt that kind of rejection. Okay. So now we have this beautiful hair on bird. Okay. One of my favorites. They are, um, they are one of those kind of tall. I mean, some of them are tall, some of them are smaller, but, um, I, we always have the, the blue and gray ones here. And so, um, they're kind of tall and slender and, oh, hi, Pudgy. Ooh, careful. And, um, they are a most sacred bird. They like to kind of wade in the pond or the lake in the shallows and wait for their fish. And they, um, have a feeling of being very contemplative. I love this certain, this particular image. Um, and because of the certain little, uh, it's like, a the crest and almost kind of, it looks like some kind of plant. Are you going to come down? Come on. Uh, some kind of plant. Um, and just a beautiful image of uh, being out by a lake, a uh, body of water, feeling very grounded. Um, and I think that, you know, when I see this, it is such a sign of strength and being able to be uh, that individual, right? Um, being that very thoughtful and introspective person that I know that you are also quite patient, right? Um, finding joy in the things that you do, the simplistic qualities, uh, of, you know, just kind of basking in the waters, right? And, um, watching things go by being out there, uh, among uh, all of the glory of nature, <laughs> right? I just really, I think of well, what would it be like to be able to just stand out there in the water and just kind of, um, you know, all the other birds and, and fish and, and, um, you know, whatever else is going, going on on the shoreline there and, um, just watching time kind of pass by and, um, how must they perceive all of this? How must, um, you know, these beautiful interconnected moments go for them? And, you know, I think that, no, no, not again. Sorry, bunny. No. Go on. You did your one little, you did your one little thing. Go. Oh, I love you. I love you. I know you're doing blinky eyes, but you gotta go. So, okay. So we have this, this kind of serene state. Okay. And I think that we have this hair and this is why I can't really have this guy up here all the time. He just sheds all over the place. Even getting brushed, he just, it's, he's getting to be an old man. He's losing his hair. Um, so I really think that, um, and where did you go? Um, oh, here. Yes. Uh, so... I really think that in this very kind of mindful contemplative state, we have, um, this, this sense of, um, 
a motivation towards, you know, acts of forgiveness. Okay. Um, I see this looks like a little angel and with the long wings here, kind of um, gazing up into this metaphysical realm. And I feel like it's just um, kind of alleviating the pains of um, your heart, of your, I mean, of your heart, you know, the kind of um, feeling um, inflicted by this, these old uh, feelings of shame, of rejection, um, of maybe not being enough. Okay. And, um, and then on top of that, this extra feeling of, well, why do I still feel this way? I mean, you know, uh, rationally, I know that, you know, it's silly to hold on to this. Um, but is it right? Because you feel it. So, um, maybe it's not silly but what it is is, is it is an indicator that some of these parts of self these young um kind of inner child qualities they're still hurting right and they want to be chosen and the only person that can choose them is you and so I think this is kind of like, you know, waving the, and here we have a flag here and a, a um, exclamation mark right here, kind of waving this, this place down or waving you down, waving your consciousness and attention down to go back to this place where, um, you know, you kind of re-meet yourself guide yourself into um, a sense of being loved, being worthwhile, being heard, being thought of, okay? And I think that, you know, uh, like through these uh, integration processes, healing processes, uh, you can totally take advantage of this idea of like an active imagination where you picture yourself meeting yourself as a child talking to yourself as you would a child that you've met that is um maybe feeling left out forgotten um you know hurt that they have not been chosen to be a part of the group and then what, you know, what would you say to a child like that? What would you, um, you know, what would you do with them? You know, maybe just engaging and hearing them, including them. And so in some ways we have to kind of re-raise ourselves, you know, even if it is through this kind of vision work. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I think um, more we need to do it more often because what happens these these inner children, these aspects of self that never get addressed or resolved or um, you know care taken with them, um, they they rage. You know, they, they are sad, they're lonely, and it comes up in the way that we have relationships, in the way that we exist, the way that we feel about things, you know, so we must be mindful. And then I see these as kind of mouths, right? And they, <laughs> they remind me of these big mouths just kind of um, sucking things in. And I think that, that that is really that feeling of just feeling like you're falling into the void. You know, just kind of like being um, devoured by this these moments of just pain and it's spiraling. It's all consuming. But the only way to kind of um, do anything about it is, is facing it head on. Okay. And so, um, let's see. Let's 
And then I want to look at this one because it looks like an H. And I don't know. There, it seems that an H is important for some reason. Okay. Um, something to do with the situation. Maybe a person involved with an H name. Um, maybe it is some kind of special word for you. Um, some Somehow, some way that is coming up. Okay. Um, but we, I just keep seeing these kind of sweet little hearts everywhere. And so I feel that even in these places that have been so painful for you, you've never given up on being a loving, affectionate, caring person. You are probably quite thoughtful. And, um, you know, you, I feel that you have built your own chosen family and you are devoted to them and honor them. And, um, you know, there are probably times when things do come up, uh, you know, being irritable, being um, maybe triggered by something that makes you quite emotional or angry. And um, there's not really a clear connection, but, um, you know, it's very much related to maybe how you were treated when you were young. And so I think it's worth looking at. There might, you know, I would say sometimes in these situations, this is when we really kind of activate those support systems when we uh, look into counseling or therapy or, um, you know, whatever kind of holistic process that might be useful to you. Um, you know, I feel that the universe, uh, definitely opens these windows for us so we can really, you know, get that kind of, um, uh, flow of fresh air into our kind of personal temples and get unstuck, right? Um, stop kind of chasing our own tail about things and, just, you know, really um, deciding that, okay, this is going to be an important um, on taking for me. Okay, and so, Taurus, I want to thank you so much for allowing me to do this reading for you. It is always such an honor to bring these messages. And if you'd be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm and grow the channel. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next video is coming out. Um, between now and the next course, you can watch your other placements, your solar, lunar, ascendant, slash rising, Venus, and cross-watching. Um, other than that, if you want to leave a comment... Uh, I read every single one of them and I try to get back to them really quickly. Sometimes it takes me a day or two, but I do read them and I, you know, I, they mean so much to me, truly. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will talk again really soon.